In this video, we'll add support for cross-sells to our integration. This will give our customers the opportunity at checkout to purchase an additional product related to their order and is a great way to grow your revenue. We'll look at how to enable cross-sells in the dashboard and how you can access your customer's final order after they complete checkout. Our sample integration was built using the Checkout Quick Start Integration Builder, and then we added onto it in previous episodes of this series. For this video, we're not going to add any additional code, but we will look at some of the components of the code that are important to understand when you're working with cross-sells. You can find links to both the code as well as to relevant previous videos in this video's description. Let's start by quickly reviewing the code we have. We have a route create checkout session that is called when our customer clicks the submit button on our checkout page. The checkout session is created with a single line item, in our case for a box of chocolates. This route generates the underlying checkout session object and redirects the customer to Stripe's hosted checkout page. On the checkout page, we'd like to give our customers the chance to purchase an additional product. This is known as a cross-sell. We can enable this by configuring a cross-sell product within our dashboard. If we look at the product details for the box of chocolates, you can see the cross-sell section with a pull-down menu of eligible products. I have just one product available, my business logo stickers. Now at the time of this recording, there are a couple of restrictions around products that can be used as cross-sells. One restriction is that the product can only have a single price, and that price's currency must match the currency of one of the prices for the main product. In this example, my stickers have a price in US dollars and will only appear as a cross-sell option when I've configured the checkout session to use the US dollars price for the box of chocolates. You can check the docs for more information around restrictions, particularly if you are using cross-sells with recurring products. Now when I go back to checkout, I have an option to add a sticker to my order. Note that at the time of this recording, the quantity for cross-sell products was limited to one. I'll complete my purchase and can see both items displayed on the success page. When we enable cross-sells, we're potentially letting the customer change their order from what we initially configured it to be when we created the checkout session. This means that before we display the order back to the customer or go to fulfill the order, we need to make sure to get the finalized line items. Fortunately, we added support for this when we enabled adjustable quantities, so let's go review that code now. To build our success page, we make a call from our success.js file back to the order info route on our server. This route takes the session ID and makes API calls to retrieve the session as well as the corresponding customer object. We also make a call to checkout session list line items to get the line items in the order. We do a similar thing when fulfilling the order. When we get an event notifying us that the checkout session has been paid, we call our fulfill order method. Just like in our order info route, we use the list line items method so we know exactly what the customer purchased. If I decide I no longer want to offer a cross sell, I can simply disable it within the dashboard. Now the product won't be offered in any new checkout sessions. Thanks for watching. You can find more resources about checkout and how checkout can help grow your revenue in this video's description.